Good morning. It's really a pleasure to join the others in congratulating Ori on this occasion. Uh, like uh, Uzi and Yossi, uh, my friendship with Ori goes back to our PhD studies and my first memory uh, with him was hunting for cookies at midnight when we were doing our PhD till this time of the night and usually found these cookies and another student at Shaul Mukamel's desk uh, and reading his desk was one of our uh, fun time during this night. But this went on to uh, many years of uh, friendship, both personal and scientific, a lot of inspiring discussions, and uh, this was a great experience and this still continues. So uh, uh, I really congratulate Ori on this occasion and we'll move to uh, the first talk uh, by Israel Sheik on the early development of the microscope. Before starting my talk, I would like to say that, Ori, please count me on the list of Joshua, Avram, Uzi, and Yossi as a good friend of yours. And Yossi stole the idea to congratulate Joshua and Albert Einstein for their today's birthday. Now, before the real talk, I would like to show you some things. First, uh, we have the picture of the third grades of chemistry, the bachelor grades, including two dear persons, Ori Cheshnovsky and Dalia Kimchi. Dalia is here at the second, at the second to the left of Ori. Dalia became later Dalia Cheshnovsky and I think we all miss her. Then I would like to show a very nice aspect of Ori. Ah, I forgot. When I came, I was welcomed by two persons, Yossi and Ori, and they explained me a few facts about their supervisor who became my supervisor, Joshua, and they told me how to behave. And what I remember from Ori is a person, the first thing, a person running at the corridor late nights with short trousers singing. He ran like a pendulum from his office to the laboratory, from the laboratory to the office, singing all the day, all the, all the way. Now, Ori is a nice uh, painter. Here we have a caricature of Ori and two and himself, and Arle Gedanken, who also made his PhD here at the university. But let me warn them: they stand at the laboratory with sandals barefoot, which is incorrect, I think. Now. Ori, Ori's bird. Ori is uh, known as having a bird, but actually many years ago he had a bird and we had a ceremony of cutting out his bird. So for this ceremony I lifted him and we congratulated the bird and then Ori was birdless. Now about the name of Ori. Ori's name is very hard to, to say. Cieszniewski, but actually it was even harder. It was Cieszniewski in Polish, and there is a nice cafe in Wien, in Vienna, which is called Cieszniewski. It's the actual name, the original name of Ori. And now Ori and his family. Dalia, Joav, Anat, Sharon, and Ori, they did, uh, there you had an occasion at the airport on on the, the, about 12, 12 years ago. So, let's start. We start with the, the guy called Sherlock Holmes, who is talking to his attaché, to Dr. Watson, telling him that without the microscope, he couldn't go on in his uh, uh, forensic research. So, he looks at the, at the microscope and says that they have begun to realize the importance of the microscope. It's the end of the 19th century. So we start with this and we go back many years ago. And there is a nice picture by Danny Kerman about Sherlock Holmes, the chemist. 
Okay, the magnifying glass of Aristophanes. Aristophanes, a playwright of old Greece. Oops, sorry, the title is incorrect. Anyway, it's the magnifying of the pharaoh called Rahotep. Rahotep at the third millennium BC is his, um, um, his face is his eyes are filled with um, lenses which the Egyptians knew that they may in, uh, increase things. Now this is of course uh, uh, at his sculpture, but if we go on, we come to Babylonia, Nimrud, and a lens was found there at the town of Nineveh by an ecologist um, Henry Laird, which thought that this uh, um, lens was a kind of magnifying lens and perhaps it's the first known microps microscope in the history of uh, humankind. It's not for sure, but he thinks it's a magnifying lens. But we go actually to more modern, to Greece, and the magnifying glass of Aristophanes, he wrote a play called Cl The Clouds. In The Clouds he tells about a, a, a glass which is filled with water and serves to magnify things and later some he, he didn't know about this but actually that what he saw now um, the philosopher and historian and the poet um, uh, Seneca wrote, uh, wrote about it and says that the glass which was used by Aristophanes could be used to uh, read letters so no matter how minute they were. There is another philosopher who writes about it, uh, um, Pliny the Elder. He writes about magnifying glasses. Euclid, Euclides, who wrote about the elements of geometry and about optica, writes about magnifying glasses and he, he analyzes what actually the magnifying uh, the, the mirrors and magnifying glass do to the rays. They converge them, he writes. Um, this is a copy of his book, which may have been possessed by a great Renaissance painter called Piero della Francesca, and possibly, possibly, he used the ideas of magnifying glasses to paint his pictures. He is one of the first who actually analyzed perspective in the painting. So here are a few um, pictures of uh, Piero della Francesca, which might have been used, uh, might have been um, uh, utilized the ideas of Euclid. Now we reach Ptolemaeus, Talmai, the Alexandrian Ptolemaeus, who is known for the geocentricity, but he writes about optics. And again, Ptolemaeus analyzes magnifying glasses. He writes the, uh, the book called Mathematica, and in which he portrays glasses of different shapes and analyzes how they converge or diverge the light. He is the first to realize that a stick is broken in water. He understands something. He understands that um, that the angels depend on the velocity. He thinks about the velocity of light in the medium. So he writes a book called Optics, and this is a very modern um, uh, copy of the book, of course. And then come the Arabs, the Arabs of the golden, of Islamic golden age. Uh, Ibn Sahal, uh, who lives in the Abbasid uh, Empire of Arun al-Rashid, actually in the time of Arun al-Rashid, a little bit later. This is, if you see, this is the flag of the Abbasid Empire, which very much resembles the flag of the modern, uh, <laughs> a modern scientist of the Islam in Syria and Iraq. Now, he writes a book. And the book is a treatise of burning mirrors and lenses. And he again understands that mirrors can curve the light. And uh, actually, he is the first to find what we now call the Snell law 
of the ratio between the velocities of light in several mediums and the uh, sign of angels of breaking. So uh, he used the law of refraction to derive uh, some ideas about non-spherical lenses. He realized that he realizes that actually non-spherical lenses. I'm not sure he knows about hyperbolic or parabolic lenses, but he realizes that hyperbolic and and the parabolic lenses may converge better rays of light than spherical lenses. So, actually, he, he, he is the first to analyze it. No, I'm not sure he knows all the, he does know the, the equations, but he writes about it. Another Arab, another Muslim called Al-Hazan, Al-Hayatem. Actually, most of the uh, Arabic Muslim uh, philosophers, scientists, were called in Europe by names which were closer to the European languages, like Al-Jaber, who created the algebra, was called Geber, like a German name, but he was not German, he was Arabic. Anyway, uh, Al-Hazan, who is on Iraqi 10 dinars, and another person, it doesn't matter, they write about breaking or converging light. And he writes a book, Al-Hazan, the book is called The Book of Optics. Al-Manazir, in the book he writes again about converging light in lenses. It's not yet a microscope, but it's on the way to microscope. Now comes a medieval sage, Roger Bacon. Some people claim that he may be the father of modern science, as not, as, not exactly as a scientist, but as a thinker. Now, he... Um, he was a monk, but as a dissident, he was arrested and he put to jail in uh, Paris. Now, in Paris, he wrote, he was a, he was a, a student, a pupil of um, two persons, um, Robert Grosseteste, who was a monk and a scientist and the creator of, um, of uh, Aristotelian um, theory of uh, Middle Ages, uh, Albertus Magnus. Now he was called Dr. Mirabilis because he was so good scientist compared to other th other people. Now he writes a book, and he again realizes breaking of lights in magnifying glasses. He writes he he write a book called Opus Maius, the great book, and he sends it the book to the to the Pope, who was a supporter of science, Clementius IV, and in a kind of apology, he says that uh, science does not contradict faith. You can be both a scientist or believe in natural laws and be a good believer. Uh, and he says something in Latin, which in English is Without experiment, nothing can be sufficiently known. This is, again, something which contradicts um, Aristo, Aristotle, who, th who thinks that one needs only to think. You don't, have, you don't need to make uh, experiments. But Bacon does make experiments, also with uh, uh, magnifying uh, uh, glasses. Now, Reach 200 years later, and magnifying glass was well spread in Europe. Now you see a scriber, a writer, a monk who sits in the in the monastery, writes or copies books. And I want to um, draw your attention to two points. One is the magnifying glass. This is a picture of the. 15th century about a monk in the 13th century. The monkling fine glass and an axis which allows to turn on the, the, the scribing table. So what is the magnifying glass? It's a piece of glass that serves for detectives, of course, 
Now you see Sherlock Holmes in the movie, and he, here is Basil Rathbone, and then you see our good friend Inspector Cluse uh, by Peter Sellers. And so we go on, and lenses. Lenses, eyeglasses, people start wearing eyeglasses, spectacles, and there is a, a 15th, 15th, 16th century writer called Brandt, who writes about Narnschiff, their Narnschiff that is the ship of fools. And in the book, the, in, in the painting of the book, you see a person wearing spectacles. Now the spectacles are very heavy and they don't have temples. People have to hold them, of course. This is a nice picture, which is part of a larger picture by, um, by, uh, a German from Rottenburg am Oberen Tauber, Herlin, and this is the circumcision of Christus. Now, what you see is the person who makes the Kohen, the priest who circumcises Christus. He needs to see exactly what he does, not to make some mistakes, so he wears glasses. This is the market in your in in um, this is the market in. Um, in uh, uh, Flanders, which shows a shop of glasses, of spectacles. Now, the first time that you can see temples or for uh, glasses is a picture by El Greco, who portrays a uh, Cardinal de Guevara, who wanted to be the Pope, of course, and he wears glasses with temples. Now we reach Holland, the Netherlands, and that is the crucial place where microscopes and telescopes are made. This is the era of the golden age of um, the 17th century in Netherlands, where Holland becomes a real, almost an empire. She conquers colonies and um, she uses her forces of the sheep and um, uh, some people call it the Dutch miracle, and there is a picture by uh, uh, by um, Roystal, who is a person of landscapes, and probably the mill, the mill, the windmill is the milestone, is the crucial thing that helped uh, Holland to increase her power. Now the the, the ships, the navy of Holland. The Vok, the Freinetre, Ostindische Kompanie, that is the East Indian Company, which conquered Indonesia and Ceylon, and also uh, uh, New Amsterdam, which became New York. This was the power of Holland. And inside Holland, this is a nice, a very, I, I would say, the most typical picture of the Golden Age of Holland by Rembrandt. But at that time, most of Europe is crushed with the Thirty Years' War, so Holland is a little bit, a little bit hit by the war. Not much as uh, Germany and uh, Austria and um, and um, Poland and Hong Hungary and Czechoslovakia and um, the rest of Europe. So, what happens in Holland? A, a, an order, I would say, an order, a kind, almost a, a religious order of people who grind, grind uh, uh, lenses. It becomes a, 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 a secret in Holland to grind correctly the lenses. Now we meet a person called Hans Lippershey. Hans Lippershey is credited of inventing the telescope and the microscope, not Galileo. Galileo knew about him and took the uh, inventions and lifted the what we call the spyglass, we see it, to the sky to see the, the to see the, the the stars. But the first person probably who invented microscope is called Lippershey from from um, uh, Middelburg. Here is the Stadthus, the the Stadt the state, state house, majority of the Middelburg, and another person is a, a person called Johann de Brune, who is 
pictured here as looking with the telescope. Now the telescope becomes what is called the spy glass because people used to use the telescope not to look at the sky but to see whether somebody comes to their house. Maybe they are out of the house and their wife. There are a lot of stories about it. We'll see it. Isaac Isaac Beckman. Isaac Beckman is not very well known, but actually Isaac Beckman is the, f the first person in the modern time who speaks about atoms in a way of science, not as a speculation like Democritus. He is the great advocate of atomism, but he, he, is, um, from, he is born in Dordrecht. He writes a book about atoms but he creates a microscope. He already builds, Isaac Beckman builds a microscope and in the, peak, in the right uh, corner there is a picture, a modern picture of um, Beckman who met Descartes. Descartes served as a soldier in Holland and he met uh, in Breda, he met uh, Beckman and they discussed science. There is a, it's another story of course, but this is a single picture which I have about um, the the smaller person on the right is Isaac Beckman, who builds a microscope. Probably one of the first microscopes ever built. I'll skip it. Now, another person, Zacharia. Zacharias Janssen, a Dutch spectacle maker. They are not professors at the university. They are not um, uh, official scientists. They are grinders of lenses. But he understands something. He is uh, from. Uh, he he was born in the Hague, Den Haag. This is a nice picture. There are a lot of nice pictures from Holland at that time. A nice picture of uh, Den Haag. He realizes something. He says the following. He says, in, instead of taking one lens, let us take two lenses, and put them in such a way that the left one on the left there will create a real image then another lens will create a virtual image which, which makes the uh, object much larger. So, here's the reproduction of a telescope, a microscope of him. He, bo he, he built both uh, uh, instruments. People in Europe knew about the microscopes, about the telescope, and there was kind of something called the Follies of telescope. People used the tel uh, 200 years later, there was the follies of electricity. People knew that if they touch something, the hair, I cannot show it, but their hairs stand. That was a folly of electricity. But 200 years, there was the folly of telescope. Now, you see something very funny. It's a, it's a caricature from um, the 17th century where you see, it's very funny. You see a person who sells telescopes. He comes to the house of a rich, person, a rich merchant and sells him a telescope. Meanwhile, while this interested person looks out to see what's, what's going in his neighbor's houses, look what he does with his wife. And so people made a lot of fun of the telescope. Here is a person goes with a telescope and he will drop to the, to the well there. There is a person in the, which um, signifies Commedia dell'arte. Now there was a debate who actually invented the telescope. So the debate went on at that time. And uh, in October 1608, Lippershey filed the first known patent, in, probably in the world, for the telescope. There is the patent. Now what happens that um, is that um, the son of Janssen claims that Lippershey stole the, pet stole the idea of the telescope and microscope from his father and filed a suit against Lippershey. So we see a quarrel about who invented the, the microscope. And there was a trial. I don't know the results. A third person comes called, um, uh, called Matthews who also claims that he invented the telescope and the microscope. He was born in, the, in the Alkmaar. 
we have to give some credit, as we have to do with other inventions, to the Chinese, which probably everything that uh, was invented in the West, in Europe, always people say, ah, some 100, 600 years ago, it was, uh, before it was invented in China, who knows? But there is a map of the sky which probably was created by looking with glasses at the sky, which may be called telescope. The first person who looked at the sky with a telescope was not Galileo, but was another person. A few months before Galileo wrote 1609, Thomas Harriot of England looked at the sky and painted the moon. He drew the moon, and um, actually there was a kind of quarrel of uh, of uh, credit between him and uh, and uh, uh, Galileo. Now, just one point: this person, Harriot, was the inverter of greater than and smaller than. He is the first person who used these signs, and he the, is the person who brought potato to uh, England. Okay, here comes Galileo, and Galileo understands that he can use the telescope to look at the sky, and he comes to the Duce, the Duce of uh, Venezia, and he, say, he, he tries to take to, to, be, to have some money from the um, Republic, Republic of uh, Venice, and he shows the Duce how you can use the telescope to look at the sky, and this is something like he calls him out Look at the sky, he says, and see how many stars from Genesis. This is the telescope of Galileo, the original telescope of Galileo. And we go back to Holland, to the Netherlands, and we meet Christian Huygens, which actually is Christian Huygens. That is how the Dutch say, call him. Here is on the, um, on the bill of 20 gulden. Now, Christian Huygens is the son of a very rich person called Constantine Huygens. Constantine Huygens owns a large um, estate and is not only a rich person, he is a diplomat and he supports science and art. Actually, he meets a young, poor painter and he calls him to Amsterdam and says to him, I'll support you. And a few first pictures, paintings, let me have. This is a person called Rembrandt. So the father Huygens, Huygens is the supported mazenat of Rembrandt. Now, what does Huygens do? He works on birefringence, double refraction, and he is one of the first person to measure correctly the speed of light. He, they, already they knew that the speed of light is finite, not infinite, and he finds that uh, the speed of light is 2.2, 10 to the fifth kilometer by second, which is an error of 27, we forgive him. And he writes an essay about optics. This is the uh, this is the grinding uh, studio of Huygens, of the Brazil Huygens, together with his brother. He did a lot of science, but I'm not going to, to talk about it. This is another picture. We meet another person who grinds lenses in order to create good microscope. This is Baruch Benedict Spinoza, who um, lived in the Jewish ghetto of Amsterdam. And this is the machine which he used to grind uh, uh, lenses. Now, another Dutch person, Anthony Philips van, this is correct according to Jacqueline, Leeuwenhoek. Leeuwenhoek. It's very hard to say the name. He is born in Amsterdam. Uh, sorry, he's born in Delft. And I wrote his, his date of birth. 24th of October, 1632. He had a neighbor who was born exactly in the same month. The name, the neighbor is Johannes Vermeer, the painter, the great painter, Johannes Vermeer. 
And here's a painting of their hometown Delft. Now, I show them, I show both of them, because there are two pictures of Vermeer. One is called the geographer, the geograph, oil picture. The other one is the astronomer, the astronome. Both are probably of the great uh, lens grinder and scientist, Van Leeuwenhoek. Van Leeuwenhoek is probably the first person who actually uses microscope. So there is a new book which is called The Eye of the Beholder in which the um, lady Laura Schneider, Schneider writes about the friendship of the painter Vermeer and the scientist, the lens grinder um, uh, Van Leeuwenhoek. Here's the diagram of his micro microscope and um, I called Ori to ask him how the hell did he look in, in, in the object. Now Ori says, according to what I see, he had to do like this, something like this. I didn't see Ori because we talked on the telephone and then I found the picture. Here's the picture, who knows by whom, maybe Farmer, and that is the way that Ori told me, so Ori knew it, Ori told me how he looked. Actually, he raised the, 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 the instrument like this, and there are no, the, there are no cylinders. He had to look at the, uh, straight at the, at, the, at, the, at the lens. But we cross the canal, and we reach England. We come to London and we meet Robert Hooke. Robert Hooke, who, know, who is well known about the elastic law of springs, was a poor person. Um, he was the curator, not exactly the president, the curator of the Royal Society of England. And though he was very ill always, he was a perfect, a, a wonderful scientist. Actually, what we know about Robert Boyle's law, the law of Boyle, which is also called boyle Mariot, was experimented by Hooke, who was a kind of assistant of, a, of a, a Boyle. Actually, Boyle used the idea for springs, and he says that he pushes the cylinder, and he sees that the force comes back, so he says, this is a kind of spring which Hooks knows about it. So Hooks can be credited about, it should be called a Hook, the boy law. Anyway, he writes a, a book called Micrographia, Micrography, Micrographia in Latin, and this is the first book which deals with microscope. Now, the book became a, a, a hit. People bought the book just for the pictures there. The book shows a lot of things. Fleas, even men's sperm. He looked at sperm, he looked at hair, and he analyzed it, and he made a lot of pictures at, at the book. Now, this is the, it was the first major publication by the Royal Society. Actually, the Royal Society of England is not the first learned society. The first one is... Uh, we talked with Yeshua about um, an Italian society which Galileo was a distinguished member. It's called the Linkean, Linkean Academy after Lynx, the cat called Lynx. But the Royal Society was, and it deceased. So the Royal Society was the, the main learned society. Now, he publishes it. There are no, that, we don't know exactly how he looked like because there are some pictures which may be his. What is said is that Newton, who actually hated Hooke because Hooke wanted some credits for, from Newton in Principia for the law of 1 over r square, which he claimed, Hooke claimed, that actually he was the first person he had some point because he talked with Abraham de Moaver, with Flemsted, the royal astronomer, with um, Haley of the comet, and with Wren, the astronomer, and he told them the gravity should goes should go down with the, with with the second power of R. 
I don't know why. Let's ask the lion. Let's ask uh, 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 Newton. But Newton was angry about this mention and he actually turned down the picture of Hook from the Royal Society, from the walls of the Royal Society, so we think we know how he looked like. Anyway, uh, Hook was the first person to realize by looking by the, at the microscope that there are living cells and he called them cell. He is the person to call them cells. Look at the beautiful picture. Who made the picture? We don't know exactly. Maybe Hook himself, but maybe the uh, architect, mathematician, Wren. Christopher Wren, who actually built London after the big fire of the 17th century. Now look at this beautiful book and it was sold. The estimate price was thirty to $40,000. The price realized was fifty-two, more than $52,000. I wish, I wish I owned the book, but I do not. Now, Hook was the first person, probably the first, who knows, the, to to um, realize the uh, the way light goes over razors much before Young, before Robert Young. Now we don't have much time. I think I have to finish a few minutes. Okay. What's the difference between microscope and telescope? It's only the way you put the lenses. I won't go much about it. The, um, uh, the, the point is that at the microscope. Everybody knows you have to increase the object in the telescope. You have to take light from far away and to make them parallel. So the putting the, the, the lenses is the secret between is the difference between microscope and telescope. And here is modern laboratory of, tele, of microscope, Ori Chesnovsky laboratory in 2013. A young scientist and a baby scientist look at the microscope. This is Omer Tsang, the student of Ori, and me and a small candidate who is, a, I would say, a close relative of me. I, I brought him to Ori's laboratory and I finish with an anecdote. The anecdote is about resolving power of a microscope. Heisenberg Werner Heisenberg wrote, uh, wrote a dissertation. The dissertation was not about quantum mechanics. It was, it, it was about hydrodynamics. The supervisor was the great Arnold Sommerfeld. And uh, uh, Heisenberg gives the dissertation to the committee. And then they remember he was not yet questioned about experiments. So he, here comes three, three persons. His supervisor, Wil, uh, Arnold Johannes Wilhelm, always they have many names, Sommerfeld. His friend and half-supervisor, Max Born, one of the father of uh, quantum mechanics. And then comes, look, Wilhelm Karl Werner Otto Fritz Franz Wien. Always I think, when my mother used to call me, I have a nickname. She called my nickname, which is very short. Come home, we have dinner. Now I always think about Wien's mother calling him, Wilhelm Karl Werner Otto Fritz Franz, there is dinner. And the dinner is already cold. Anyway, Wien is, known for, is well known for Wien's law about the uh, relation of the peak of um, of the um, graph of um, uh, of the uh, black black body uh, black body uh, um, uh, uh, spectroscopy and the te and the um, and the uh, wavelength. Now, Wien claims I want to uh, I want to um, question um, the young the young person uh, Werner Karl Heisenberg about resolving power. Heisenberg never came to the studying laboratories. He was failed. He, he failed the examination. Actually, Wins demanded, Wien demanded not to let him be PhD. Two persons actually cried and asked Wien, 
forgive him, let him have another chance. He will come to the laboratory and he will study by resolving power. So the rest is history. Vin said, okay, I'll let him be a professor, a, 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 a doctor, and then he became also a professor and then came quantum mechanics. Toda